Hi right, guys, it's Mike here from Com3 Interactive. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to be talking about custom editors. Now, I think I've already made a video on custom editors before, but one thing I have noticed is the majority of the videos about custom editors, they don't really show you a real world example. Often, they just give you a little bit of an overview of how you do it and what you can do with it. But in this video, I'm going to show you a really quick one, but in my experience, quite a useful little utility, custom window, whatever you want to call it. And that's going to be randomizing rotation of game objects. So let me just give you a little bit of context here. Say that you've got an environment scene, you're in a rocky mountain, and you've got a load of little stones around the floor, some stones, some rocks. When you drag and drop those items in, they're all going to be set to quaternion dot identity, which more often than not is zero zero zero. So everything starts to look uniform, and obviously that's not good. You can go in, you can select the objects, and just randomize it yourself by dragging the Y rotation. But depending on how many objects you've got in your scene, that can take quite some time. So I'm going to show you a little utility that I've written, and what you can do, you can click one button. And any selected object that you have will get a random rotation. And also, do you like my new setup? Please tell me it's all right. Nice, colourful, bright, and a squeaky chair. That's the next thing that I need to buy. <laughs> so before we start, I just want to thank Gigatank3000 for sponsoring this video. I've got his links down in the description below. Go give him a follow on Twitter. Go check out his website. Keep up to date with what he's doing. And I also just want to thank everybody over on Patreon who's supporting me. That's Brandon Zill, Steve UK, and Raf. You're all fantastic. I love you. You're keeping me going. So as you saw in the introduction, I have this cluster of rocks. Now, if this was a first-person game, your character comes trotting along, and you come across this, it just doesn't look right. And like I said, you can go in and select each one of these and give it a random rotation on the Y, but that's going to take time, and ain't nobody got time for that. Dust off that old meme there. So what we're going to do, we're going to create a script to do this for us. So the first thing we want to do, we want to create a folder called Editor. Now, I've mentioned that in multiple tutorials before. The Editor folder is a reserved folder, and when you build your game, anything inside it won't be part of the build. And for this, we don't want it to be. This is an editor tool, so it belongs in the editor folder. Next, we'll create a new C-sharp script in there. And I'm just going to call this randomizer. And let's open this up in Visual Studio. All right, so we have our script. First thing we need to do is set this up as an editor script. So we won't be needing system.collections or system collections generic. We can get rid of those, but we will need to be using Unity Editor. Next, this isn't going to be a mono behavior. This is going to be an editor window. Now we can get rid of start and update and start converting this script into an actual editor window for Unity. So the first thing we need is a static void, and this can be called whatever you like. I just like to call it init or open window or something like that. And all this is for is whenever you click the menu item, it just needs to show the window. And the way that we can do that, we can set a new instance of randomizer. We'll just call that a window and set that equal to get window type of and then pass in our class name, which is randomizer. And you'll notice first thing, we get an error here because this is actually passing back type window and we're asking for a randomizer. So all we need to do, we just cast that. So in brackets, before the get window, we just give our class name that we want to cast it to, which is randomizer. So now we have a new instance of that window. All we need to do is call window.show. Currently, this isn't accessible from anywhere. We need to give it an actual menu item declaration, and that's done using an attribute. So above our init method, I'm going to put some square brackets, add in a menu item attribute, and inside the parentheses, we want to give it a folder hierarchy or a menu hierarchy. So I'm just going to call this comp3utils as its folder name. 
and then call it randomizer. So now if we pop back over into Unity, we should see in a toolbar at the top, when it catches up, we have a comp3 utils and then randomizer inside it. And currently we've got an empty window, but clicking on randomizer launches it. That's basically all we wanted to do inside of our init method. Next, we have a reserved method name, and that's going to be void on GUI. So this is called every time the GUI of the Unity editor is refreshed. And this is where we design a window. So first of all, I'm just going to put in a label so it kind of gives you an indication of what this window is for. So that's going to be GUI layout dot label and then again inside the parentheses we can just pass in a label and then any styling that we want so i'm just going to make this a bold label but first we want the actual message so i'm going to call or i'm going to display a message that says randomize selected objects and like i said i want this in bold so comma the next property that we're going to pass through is just going to be editor styles dot bold label and we can check that out i'm not going to go and check this every time i write a line of code i just want to see that on gui is firing and it is there's our label randomized selected objects so what else do we want in here well i want this to be used throughout my game and i'm not necessarily only going to want to rotate along the y-axis we have the x-axis and the z-axis as well so i could add in three checkboxes for the angles in which i want to randomize that direction so let's go back to the top and we're just going to add in three booleans so that's going to be random x random y and random z and then inside of our on gui we can actually create a checkbox to toggle those. So we'll set random x equal to editor GUI layout dot toggle the label that we want that toggle to have, which is going to be randomize x. And then the second property, we want to pass in a reference Boolean again. So that's going to be random x. And we can go ahead and copy that for the other two, the Y and the Z. And finally, we want a button that the user is going to press and it's going to calculate new rotations for each of the selected objects. And the way that we do buttons in custom editor or custom inspector is we need an if statement. So basically what this is going to do, this is going to check whether or not we've pressed a button that it's going to generate. So if we've pressed the button, then do this logic. So that's if GUI layout button and the text on the button is going to be randomize. So if we were to press the button that says randomize, we want to do it. So we'll just do a little for each loop in here. So we'll say for each game object, we'll call that geo, in selection dot game objects. So that's going to go through our hierarchy. It's going to get a reference to every one of our game objects that we've got highlighted, and it's going to run this code on each of those. And now we want to set the rotation of that object based on which random axes we want. So we can do game object geo dot transform dot rotation equals and i'm going to be using euler angles for this because i hate the w axis in quaternions and if i can avoid it i will so we'll do quaternion dot euler and inside here we need to pass in a vector three for the x y and z axes so instead of doing it inside here because this could get quite big because we're only randomizing specific ones so we'll just create a function for that so that's going to be a private it's going to return a vector three and we'll call that get random rotations and get random rotations is going to need to take a reference to the current object that it's working on so that's going to be another vector three and i'm going to pass in the current object's rotation now you'll see why i'm doing that in just a second but basically all we want to do now, we want to check our random X, Y, and Z booleans. If they're true, then we want to randomize that axis. 
So I'm going to set a float for the x value, and then I'm going to use a ternary operator. So I'm going to check, is random x true? If it is, we want to get random dot range between 0 and 360 range, not range. Or else, if it isn't, I'm going to use the current rotation dot x. And then we just need to work that out for the y and for the z. And then we can go ahead and return a new vector 3 with our x, y, and z. Simple. And then inside of our quaternion.euler, we can just use get random rotations and pass in the game object dot transform dot rotation and we'll pass in the Euler angles. And if everything's been done right, that should be it. So I should be able to go down here, select comp3 utils randomizer. We have our three checkboxes and our randomized button. Let me just dock this over here so I've always got it. And then if I select this rock, for example, and say I want to only randomize it on the Y, check Y, randomize, and we see every time we click it, we get a new random rotation. We select every one of our rocks, randomize, brilliant, done. How much time is that going to save you? And if you randomize it and you realize that, say, these two look quite similar, just select those two, randomize them again on their own. Simple as that. And just so you can see what happens, I've not actually tested this, so it may go completely wrong, but if I select all three and randomize, yeah, the, the rock isn't made to be shown from different angles like that. So you can still see that it works though. And this will work on any game object that you have. We haven't assigned it to be only applicable to the rock. So if you were to have tree stumps, for example, throw them in, select all the tree stumps, randomize the Y, click randomize, and it's done. And what's really good about this is because it's independent of everything else, you can save this randomizer script into a utilities folder outside of your project and bring this in every time you create a new project. And just because I love you, I'm going to put this on my GitHub page and I'm going to put a link down in the description. Don't say I never do anything for you. And you could extend this any way that you like. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to quickly tailor this and we're going to make this a scale randomizer as well. And there we go. All I've done is I've added another Boolean to check whether or not you want a random scale and also two floats for a minimum and a maximum scale that you want to go between. I've added a new section in here for the scaling, which is the toggle just like above. And the min scale and max scale are something called editor GUI layout dot float field, which is kind of self-explanatory and it works kind of the same as the toggle as well. We have a label for what that float is and then a reference to the local variable that's keeping track of it. And then again, inside of a randomize button, I'm just checking whether or not we want to randomize the scale. If we do, get a random scale value and set the transforms local scale to be a new vector three of that uniform scale. And if we go back to the editor, we can see that our editor window is updated with the scaling. If we put in a max scale of three, for example, and then randomize, we see everything works as we'd expect. We can also add the rotations in there as well, and it's all done for us. So I hope you can see how useful something like this is. So that's all I've got for you today. If you've got any requests for custom editors that you want to see, just let me know, because I really, really like doing custom inspectors. It's one of my little uh, niches that I think I'm actually quite good at. So yeah, any that you want to know, drop us a comment, and I'll see if I can help you out with it. So yeah, I'll see you again next week, guys. Thanks for watching guys, if you like the content remember to subscribe to the channel for weekly Unity tutorials.